What's up and welcome back to the Fantasy Auto Lounge at last. Yes, it's been quite a while. I took a big old hiatus to publish the Forever King and just enjoy December and kind of just, you know, deal with 2020. But I am back. This is the first video of 2021 and I have a wonderful author for the lounge today. It gives me great pleasure to introduce a prolific indie author. Her name is M.L. Spencer and she is here to chat about her brand new book, Dragon Mage. And welcome, M.L. Spencer. Let's hit this. <laughs> awesome to have you in the lounge at last. How are you doing this fine day? I'm doing really good. Well, it's COVID, so I'm doing as good as can possibly be. Like, COVID good, so. Considering, in general, right? <laughs> doing awesome considering. Well, it's great to have you in the lounge, as I said. I'm really excited to be getting stuck into all the topics that we got today, particularly one of the things that's behind you on your wall there, which is your brand new release, Dragon Mage. <laughs> I hear it's been going amazingly. I mean, I see reviews of it all the time. It's got orange tags, bestseller rankings. Yeah, it seems to be going awesome. It's going way better than I ever thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we like to hear. Well, let's get stuck in there, Melinda. Tell us about yourself, your author journey, and your books. Okay. Well, you know, I'm Mel Spencer, and I started writing probably like the moment I could like hold a pencil and. I just kind of kept writing and writing and writing. And um, when I went into college, that's when I actually started writing like novels and I tried to get them published, but they were just like rejected, 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 <laughs> never ending rejection. And so finally, sadly, I gave up. And then I didn't write for like 10 years. Um, then one day I just kind of like pulled an old manuscript out of the closet and I tried to put it back out there and again, rejection, rejection. And then I decided to self-publish. And um, when I decided to self-publish, I threw Dark Mage, which is the first book in my Rune War saga. Mm -hmm. I threw that up on Amazon and it languished there because I had no idea how to market anything. I had no social media. I didn't do anything until about 2016 when I'm like, you know, I should probably like learn how to do this author stuff because I think I'm gonna write more novels. And that's when I started marketing myself and that's when people actually started reading what I was writing, and <laughs> that was pretty exciting. Awesome. How many books are there in the, uh, the Rem Wars saga? Um, there's five. Um, there's like four books in the main saga, and then there's like a prologue. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I keep seeing like the big old box set that you've got up on Amazon. <laughs> it's always like on my <laughs> recently viewed or wish list and things like that. So yeah, it looks great. And then, oh, so yeah, recently, was it um, only a couple of weeks ago now, you launched the new book Dragon Mage, which is from all I've seen on Amazon as well, in terms of the page count and the pictures of your hardbacks, it's huge. It's like a thousand pages, isn't it? <laughs> I wish I had like um, a hardback here, but it's across the room. That's okay though. Yeah, it's like, um, well, the printed version is like 828 pages. And Kindle calls it like 980 or something <laughs> on Kindle. So it's, it's chunky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was my COVID-19 project. I started that on April 1st. Um, right after, like, I got sent home from school because I'm a school teacher too on the side. Oh, so, cool. yeah. yeah, we went home, you know, quarantine. I'm like, okay, well, if I'm going to quarantine, <laughs> let's do this quarantine, right? <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. So, how long did it take you from April 1st then? It took me about four months, um, kind of start to finish. Um, I probably would have gotten, now it sounds terrible, but I should have gotten done sooner, but I had a couple projects on the side. I try to write like a chapter a day. So oh, yeah. it's 100 pages or 100 chapters long. So it's about like 100 days. <laughs> that's a really good way to think about it. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> you know exactly how many days it takes. But yeah, that's really cool. That's a good way to do word counts. And then, yeah, released obviously uh, recently. And I mean, where did the, I mean, because everyone seems to be, and it's one of the reasons why the book has immediately moved up near the top of my TBR. I'm really excited to be getting around to it. Not just because there's a big dragon on the cover. And I love dragons, <laughs> but from what I'm hearing about the story and its originality and things like that. So yeah, tell us more about Dragon Mage, the actual, without any spoilers, of course, uh, the actual kind of, yeah, the innards of it. Um, well, I think the first thing that I came up with was the idea of the world. Um, I wanted a world that was kind of like split in half. And so I have the world above, which is the world of men. And there's really no magic there, at least not a lot. And then the world below, um, that's like the world of magic and that's where the dragons are and all kinds of like 
yeah. ma magicish things. Stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, the truth is, I had been building, like, world building it for, like, God, years. Like, I'd say, like, three or four years. But I didn't have a story to put in the world. And mm. so that just kind of finally hit me, like, last March, I think it was. And I just, right. like, I got the idea for Aram. And I'm like, oh gosh, I think that I could actually like put this in. So I started working it out and you know, I'm like, wow, this works. <laughs> so I threw it all together. I threw it in and yeah, it came out, you know, the way I wanted it to. So I was pretty happy with it. Amazing. Amazing. So, I mean, in terms of Aram, because you mentioned him, he's the main character. Um, and I believe he's from, you know, what I've heard in the reviews and things like that, and also from what you said, um, that he's a neurodiverse character. He's not your usual character you might find within your standard kind of you know, fantasy books. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about Aram. You know, why did you choose to represent neurodiversity? Um, and yeah, how important is it to you? Um, I just, I kind of wanted to create a character that's like, I guess, more like me because I'm on the spectrum. And I wanted to really show something that, well, it took me a long time to kind of figure this out about myself. But a lot of the things that I had always thought about myself as being like weaknesses, um, I've realized lately that a lot of them are actually strengths and cool. that I really wouldn't trade them for anything. And I wanted to create a character that was like that, that could actually really show that just because, you know, you're on the spectrum or you're neurodiverse, um, that doesn't make you any less than anybody else. In fact, sometimes it can make you, you know, really good at things that you do. Like um, a good example of me is I have always like hyper-focused on stuff. Like when I was like a little kid, um, First, it was uh, dinosaurs. I could have told you mm -hmm. anything about any type of dinosaur. <laughs> I mean, like down to like the smallest thing. I used to annoy yeah. the heck of people. Then it was horses. Then it was Battlestar Galactica. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Brilliant. literally, I could recite the whole movie. To, in fact, I did do that so people would annoy the crap out of them. I was sit there and just recite the movie for two hours. Um, but that actually, that hyper focus has really allowed me to be. Um, you know, a good author, because I can just sit there and I can hyper focus on that. And that's all I think about day or night, <laughs> which is annoying to people. And it could be a problem sometimes, but it makes me, you know, pretty good at what I do too. So I'm really happy that I have that hyper focus. And so that's kind of what I threw into my main character. I wanted a character who basically could hyper focus on magic. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> really super good at that. So, yeah. That's really cool. And I mean, I know the feeling of <laughs> constantly annoying people with fantasy ideas and geeky things, especially when they're not from, yeah, maybe that sort of fan sphere. <laughs> they're not into sci-fi fantasy. Like most of my friends, I'm like, oh, have you seen the new trailer for this? Or have you seen this book about that? And it's just, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I think it's really, I mean, you know, throughout these uh, these author lounges, we talked a lot about kind of where fantasy is going and the modernity of fantasy, you know, without leaving its roots behind and its kind of, you know, general setting behind. Um, you know, I'm seeing, I think we all are, seeing a huge amount of representation rising and getting into fantasy, which is brilliant. And I think, you know, this is the first time I personally have come across, um, you know, a book like this and a character like Aram, who is, you know, written, I mean, I can imagine you're not trying to ram the point home, you know, because <laughs> from the reviews I've read, again, it doesn't seem like that. But again, it's it's representation, which I'm, I'm really enjoying and, and why that's key. And it's, you know, it's, it's awesome that you're doing that. So yeah, <laughs> like I said, can't wait to read it. Well, you know, honestly, I'm absolutely floored that there's not more books out there with characters like Aram because I can, you know, pretty much guarantee you, you know, fantasy is kind of a geeky kind of thing. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, you know, yeah, we, we definitely need more neurodiversity in fantasy. I think it would be mm. really, really super important. So. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's again something that I, I completely echo and all types of representation because, I mean, it's the world itself that we base our own myths and fantasies on, you know, it's, it's incredibly diverse and it's a huge melting pot of all different types of people and mindsets, opinions. And yeah, it's, it's something I think we need to represent and any world to feel richer, I think, needs to have that representation of the diversity of the real world, whether some people like it or not. <laughs> Um, but in terms of, you know, aside from the story and the work you put in, in the kind of production and creation stages, what's your process of, you know, success or making this book a success? Um, well, I just kind of started planning out the launch of this book, honestly, like probably four months ago. So there's just a lot of organization of what needs to happen when and 
you know, who, who can share, you know, it on their feed, what day, stuff like yeah. that. Um, so there, there's like a lot going on. You know, I had to get out to beta readers, mm -hmm. had to get out to my ARC readers. I had to like actually like get like all of my ARC readers like into a group. So they're trying to get like people talking about it, stuff like that. Uh -huh. So yeah, there was a lot of, I guess, just organization. I mm -hmm. can't believe all the hours I actually really put into it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, isn't there? I mean, yeah. It's it's almost kind of it's scarier than writing the book in a way. <laughs> I think you know the organisation that's got to go, especially if you are doing things like yeah, you know, finding ARC readers, uh, early reviews, things like that. It's it's a lot of spreadsheets, I imagine. <laughs> a lot of I, I actually ended up having to get like um, a project management software system to handle this one. I've never done that before, but I'm like, sounds I good. Can't do this by myself. <laughs> That sounds quite a wise thing to do because I mean, yeah, I'm losing track of the amount of spreadsheets I've got for the it's like 10 or 20 per book. <laughs> I just, yeah. So, in terms of um, your marketing, then you're very active on social media and obviously outreach into blogs and things like that. Where's your, where does kind of like the main marketing success come from? What's your kind of, yeah, I wouldn't say favorite channel, but what's the most effective channel for you as an indie author or channels? Um, Probably just AMS ads. I do. I've always done a lot of AMS ads, and they really mm -hmm. work for me. I think better than other things. Um, Twitter probably Instagram doesn't really work for me very well. Um, mm -hmm. I've been seeing a little bit more activity on Twitter lately, but um, for the amount of followers I have, I, I don't get a lot of engagement. Um, Facebook is a little better, definitely. Mm. Um, but I think the really the big thing that actually gets my book out there in front of audiences the most is the AMS ads, the mm. AMS marketing services. Yeah, I mean they're tricky, but they can be worthwhile as you as you've proven. Yeah. Kind of a strange question, going slightly off pace here, but <laughs> um, do you enjoy the marketing side, or do you find it an absolute kind of toil? Because <laughs> you know, there's some authors that think you know they kind of enjoy it, and they you know they focus their channels on what they love, um, and you know a dash of things they need to do. Um, but you know, some people absolutely love it. Some people kind of like it. <laughs> so yeah, where do you find yourself? Um, I, it's like a necessary evil to me. I mean, right. I, just, I have like my little systems where in the morning I will get up every day, get my coffee, look yeah. at my ads, tweak that, <laughs> tweak that, you know, do I need a new one? Um, and I get that all out of the way <laughs> probably before five in the morning and wow. that I can the rest of my day doing what I want to do. <laughs> Yeah, so, that's an early yeah. start. <laughs> it's not fun. I mean, if I do like do like a Facebook ad or something, um, and I need to get like an image for it, that I enjoy a little bit more. I love mm. like just, you know image processing, photo editing, and stuff like that. So that's yeah. like digital art basically is fun for me. But writing ad copy and actually looking at numbers, oh, I am not a numbers kind of person. I'm not. Nah. So it's torture. And I don't know how you do that before. Half five? Did you say five a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I pretty rituals. I usually get up like around four a.m. every morning, and wow. uh, then I like yeah, I, I copy up, I do all my numbers, I run my numbers and stuff like that, and then I start mm -hmm. writing. And I try to get everything, like even my writing, out of the way before I have to like go to my teaching job during the day because mm. after the afternoon I'm just I'm done. Um, yeah. <laughs> physically dead. I mean, it's all I can do to like come home, flop into bed, take a two hour nap. <laughs> um, and I, I, I'm just like not in the mood to write that. So I try to get it all out and done in the morning. Mm, it's a good tactic. It's something that I, I try to do as often as possible because yeah, I find myself being far more, I would say awake is the word. There's just something about it. I think I'm, I'm thinking less, doubting less in the mornings. I don't know what it is, just yeah, <laughs> kind of not sec second guessing myself like I would do for some reason later in the day. I think, yeah, going, be going before bed as well, <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, if I'm like writing later in the day, it, it, it's, it almost, it, it's like it comes painfully. It's like mm. pulling teeth, like just the mental processing isn't like what it is in the morning. In the morning, I just, I guess I have a lot of clarity, you yeah. know, and so it just yeah. kind of comes. And um, I think I do like a lot of plotting during the night when I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> now that is a superpower that I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really weird because I'll like, I'll have like this terrible block, you know, and I'm like, oh God, I wrote myself into a corner. I've got no idea how I'm going to get out of this situation. I'll wake up the next morning. So, oh, it's done. <laughs> and I have no idea how that happened in the night. That's brilliant. 
I'm so jealous of that. I mean, yeah, I saw it was a Gareth Powell talking about the other day. He tweeted, um, uh, he woke up with a full, or he dreamt a full book uh, or story arc. I think either for one book or a whole series um, in, a, in his own genre. I was just like, yeah, that's cool. Thank you for that universe. I'll write that now. I was like, God damn. <laughs> that's happened like every now and again. I'll like dream something weird. I'll be like, that'll go into a book, but not a whole <laughs> A to Z of like an actual story arc and then be able to recall it in the morning. And then that, your, your superpower sees, sounds even more unfair. <laughs> But well, awesome, man. yeah. That's it doesn't really cool. hit me all the time, but when it does hit me, it's it's super cool. <laughs> <laughs> really, I'm normally staring at his face or something. I'll go for a walk and just have to just think, like, if this does that, what does that do? And just, oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, aside from waking up with with clarity and, and plot ideas and dreams and things like that, which is great. Where does your inspiration come from, um, in general, or you know, what do you kind of look for when you're lacking, and, and what do you use to kind of boost yourself? Um, well, like when I'm really like stuck, yeah, going for a drive and playing just music and stuff like that, I find music really triggers my imagination. Mm. I have like a pretty visual like imagination. And mm. so if I got music going in the background, all of a sudden there's a movie in my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, that will just kind of like build upon itself and put itself together. Sometimes if I'm stuck, you know, I guess I could like go to poetry and stuff like that and just try to see if the muse hits me, but um, mostly it's music. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, poetry is one I, I know a couple of our authors in our, in our kind of circle, uh, for instance, Phil Tucker, he yeah, really appreciates poetry and really gets a lot from it. I do struggle. I'm one of these people that kind of struggles with poetry. Um, <laughs> it's probably to my, to my fault. I haven't given it enough time, but that's really interesting. Something we haven't heard in the lounge actually before, which is always nice. <laughs> that's cool. So what are your favorite, um, ooh, it's always unfair to say favorite bands uh, or favorite band, at least singular. So what, what kind of genres, or is it eclectic or you know, what are some of the things you listen to? I'm always interested as a fellow musician. Okay, well, writing, I really like to listen to like Two Steps from Hell, just because nice. it's a video game kind of film kind of thing that mm -hmm. really lends itself to the movie in my head, you know. Yeah. Um, listening, I am more of like a rock person. Um, I just like, you know, like 80s rock, 90s rock, um, nice. I don't know, The Killers, you know, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, even like those strange Canadian people you may have heard of called Rush, you know, it's probably like one of the <laughs> Yes, I think might have come across it. In fact, weirdly enough, I watched uh, that com uh, comedy film, I Love You Man, the other day. With, uh, and the, just the obsession with Rush in that film actually made me listen to a lot of Rush songs. I was like, damn, I've, I've missed some of this. And yeah, I put it back into my writing playlist and things like that. <laughs> So you get into your writing process because I'm just fascinated by how early you get up, but also, you know, in terms of just, um, you know, every author I meet, I'm always kind of curious about, you know, um, writing processes, and for example, you know, to just kind of give it a vague term, but because um, everyone's different, but also some people are quite similar. Do you uh, have music on while you're writing? Are you kind of like, uh, you know, have a little kind of writing cave? What do you prefer to do? Um, this is my writing cave. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there we go, around the room. I have oh, cool. Like that's a poster, like, that. like book signings and stuff, but yeah, nice. that's, yeah, that's my other computer. Yeah, what a so fine writing, in my writing cave right now. This actually used to be my daughter's room <laughs> before <laughs> I moved in here. I literally like didn't have a writing cave and I wrote in bed or anywhere I could find. Mm. Um, so now I'm, yeah, I'm in here, and what I usually do is I dictate, so I put on like my little of headphones course. and yes. um. What I'll actually do, this sounds terrible, but I can have absolutely no sound when I'm writing, none at all. Right. So I usually play like um, something like, you know, white noise or brown noise or pink noise huh. in my ears while I'm writing. And that just kind of like puts me in the zone and then I can write. I can't have anything going on. Like God forbid, if I can even hear the TV like a little bit in the other room, it just completely blocks mm. all my thought, I can't think. That's really, really interesting, especially because also, I don't think we've chatted to anyone in the author lounge who dictates as well. I remember actually you talking about this on our author groups a little while back, and I still find it amazing that you can get that flow, for especially the size of Dragon Mage in four months as well. Because I would just, I've tried it and I just forget what I'm saying, <laughs> just get wrapped up in how I sound. So yeah, did it take you long to uh, get used to it? It, it did, it took me a while. And I'm still not one of those people, there's people who can literally like 
go on a walk and dictate into like the recorder. See, I, I can't do that. I have to have it on, you know, in front of me on the screen or I would forget what you just said. Um, so that is one thing. So I am strapped to a desk. I can't just like go out in the wild and you know, talk to myself in my <laughs> phone or something. I wish I could do that. That would be so amazing. But actually getting into it, the way I got into it, I didn't have a choice. Um, I did something stupid. I went on vacation and I was doing yoga and writing at the same time, like I wrote like 10,000 words a day while doing stupid yoga. We'll call it stupid yoga. I hadn't done <laughs> yoga in forever and I decided to go to advanced yoga -ing techniques, which really bent my, my hands back. So I ended up pulling all the tendons in my arms and didn't even know until two days later. Well, here I am, tendonitis that honestly I'm still suffering from from time to time. And I had like both arms and braces for like six months. I looked like a little mm. T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't Pretty type much. because um yeah I, I couldn't even click a mouse for a while it was so bad um oh, wow yeah no that's not good for, for anyone who uses computer especially an author yeah it was awful um so I went to dictation and at first it was terrible because come to find out you use like a different part of your brain for speaking hmm. than typing Right. And okay. so that really affected my, my voice and just my whole thinking process and my writing went to complete crap. Wow. <laughs> it yeah. did. And it took me probably, I'm thinking like 20,000 words before I was actually like actually writing meaningful, productive stuff with it. Wow. Yeah. That's dedication though. Yeah. I'm glad you, glad you carried on and practiced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if I didn't, I would, oh God, I don't know what I would do. I would not mm. be writing. And that would not be fun and I would not be yeah. happy today but um I yeah even today my my whole process has changed a lot from when I was actually typing um mm. when I used to type I used to hunt and pick for every single word mm. what could be the best word for this sentence you know right, right. Time. I don't do it anymore I just talk and it comes out and it's it's, it's a complete disaster so my first drafts are a disaster. And so now I spend a lot of time having to go back and trying okay. to polish it up and look for those great little words. Mm. Um, whereas before I did that, like at the time of the writing instead of after the writing. Mm. I find that really interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, especially because you're just sitting there and literally talking out a thousand right. pages of fantasy. Does your throat ever get dry? Do you have to I mean, have like, <laughs> do you ever lose your voice or just water? Yeah, and coffee? yeah I, I'm really <laughs> weird. I have to have water with me every single moment of my life. And the moment I get up, even I like wake up in the middle of the night and I go get water. I don't know why, but yeah. So no, mouth never gets dry. And I've always got my water. Amazing. Right I'd probably lose my uh, lose my voice because I, yeah, I just normally, because I just yeah, sit in my writing cave and, and what have you, most of the days just, um, writing not talking and then yeah if i ever go out and have a you know extended evening or afternoon with friends or whatever, not obviously in these climates um but yeah it's i, I the next morning I, I wake up my voice is hoarse and i'm losing my voice <laughs> so, yeah you talking all day every day that's brilliant yeah that's work. Uh, any writing familiars as well? That's the question I'm going to start asking this year in the author lounge because I want to get more pets <laughs> involved in this. Oh man, my, my familiar is just right outside. My, oh, no. my black cat. <laughs> I thought I'd seen a black cat in some of your pictures and, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah his name is Andy and uh, he's a big black <laughs> coon cat and um, he's the most peculiar cat in the world because he is like really lovey, cuddly one minute and the next minute he's like attacking you. <laughs> oh no. Oh, yeah, I yeah. love them. Classic cats, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm in need of a writing familiar. It's probably why you know that question's creeping into the lounge. But yeah, I, I grew up with cats and a couple of dogs as well. It's just it's nice having something around, isn't it? Like that. It really is. I'm starting to realize that I think it's like a prerequisite for being an author is you must have a pet, and it usually is a cat. <laughs> I find so, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Rob, Rob J. Hayes went the beagle route as well as, yeah, Kareem's got those two gigantic hounds, hasn't he? So, yeah, <laughs> uh, we'll see. Everyone in the world, I, I swear, especially, well, obviously Canada's my only frame of reference right now, um, but I swear, as soon as COVID started, everyone was just snatching up every single adoption animal they could, you know, be it a bird or a lizard, <laughs> a snail, or what have you. Well, yeah, we need companions. I mean, here we are sitting, like, I don't know, in our homes all isolated throughout yeah. the day. Yeah, it's not fun. You gotta have somebody yeah. to talk to. That's it. Yeah. Well, I've just got an Xbox and the TV, so I've had, yeah, <laughs> Netflix on loop. <laughs>
yeah, tell you what, let's end off with uh, what's coming for you in the future. So obviously, will there be a Dragon Mage 2? The Dragoning? Dragon Harder? <laughs> <laughs> Dragon yeah. with a Vengeance? Yeah, I've been having a hard time with that. Um, like the past couple months, I've been kind of plotting out Dragon Mage 2. Um, the ideas just weren't flowing to me for a while until over the weekend. And um, then all of a sudden, they just kind of started falling in place. And so nice. I'm really happy and excited with the, the direction it's going. So now I'm, I'm back to my chapter a day. Brilliant. <laughs> and that's that's exciting. awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, it's amazing that you can... Um right slash dictate that quickly because I know people are absolutely in loving the first book and, and kind of you know, clawing at the walls for book two. So yeah, hopefully by the time you bring it out, I've read Dragon Mage, so I can't wait. <laughs> That's great. Awesome. And anything else in the pipeline? Do you normally kind of you know, focus on one project at a time and then yeah, we've got other things in the, in the work? Yeah, unfortunately I'm really bad about that. I can only like really um, kind of really focus on one project at a time. I do mm -hmm. someday need to get back to my other series and write the, um, the book three for there. Mm -hmm. It will come. I promise my fans. Um, but I am a little bit focused right now on Dragon Age because I guess I got a little bit more people excited about that right now. So I yeah. feel like I deliver that to them so yeah but eventually i'll get back to the other series so uh, where can people find you then if people haven't come across ml spencer before and want to just devour dragon mage and all the rest of your huge backlist where can we find you um well you can find me at my website which is mlspencerfiction.com um you can find me on facebook you can find me on twitter instagram i'm just all over social media so <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing about indie authors these days it's like <laughs> some of us you can't help but find <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> we're everywhere peddling our books yeah <laughs> awesome <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love the things that you've got going you know you could put all kinds of cool like little memes together about my book <laughs> it's great I'm just, yeah, obsessed. <laughs> obsessed with me. <laughs> That's cool. Well, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Melinda. This has been brilliant to chat to you. Really interesting as well. Really insightful. And uh, yeah, I'll let you get back to writing Dragon Mage 2. I'll think of another funny one, I'm sure. <laughs> I'll text it to you. <laughs> Mo Dragon. There we go. Oh, yeah, Mo Jesse. <laughs> Straight out of Dragon Town. I don't know why we have to mock the sequel so hard, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'll let you get back to that. And thanks again for joining us in the lounge. Yeah, have a good rest of the day. Stay safe out there. I hate saying that these days, but yeah <laughs> awesome and thank you everyone for watching don't forget this will be back next month as well with another author forced into the lounge to talk about their books and divulge their secrets so yeah join us then catch you soon don't forget to share and subscribe